Welcome back friends, it's me, R. Dallas, And in this short video, we're gonna take a look at how to send email using MimeKit, as well as how to make sure we can retry if that email doesn't succeed the first time. And even better, we're gonna look at the outbox pattern to make sure that we don't lose any of the emails that we're trying to send. We're gonna take advantage of a couple of Docker containers in this video. Here they are on your screen right now. You can go ahead and run these to get these going on your machine. I'm going to put those commands in the show notes as well, so it'll make it easy for you to copy and paste. All right, so first off, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to jump to PowerShell, and we're going to just run this one right here. This is going to run a test email server called PaperCut, and it's going to be listening on port 25. So if we try and send any SMTP messages on port 25, it's going to go ahead and pick those up. And then we're going to be able to see those things inside of a web browser so we'll know if those emails were sent, but they won't actually get sent to the intended recipient. Then we're gonna come over here, we're gonna run a really nice tool called Seek that makes it easy to visualize your logging, and we're gonna look at that in the browser as well once it's up and running. Now, because we're using Docker, we're gonna pull up Docker for Windows, and you can see that both of these things are now running. We've got PaperCut, we've got Seek, we can navigate to them from their respective ports, 5341, and this one here is at 37408. So let's just make sure all that is set up before we go any further. We got 5341 here, that's seek. You can see there's nothing in there yet. And the other one here. And this is paper cut. And you can see there's nothing in it either. All right, so now let's jump into Visual Studio. And let's take a look at our program. All we're going to do is set up a, a console application with a little bit of DI and logging support. And then we're going to grab an email sender and try and send an email. So this is the important line here. We're going to send an email to test at test.com from test at test.com with a subject and a body. And we just want to see if that works. Now, if we want to look at the one that we're using right now, we're getting our email sender from this get email sender helper method. And that's just going to let us pick different methods to use or different services to use in each of the demos here. So we're going to start with MimeKit email sender, which is right here. And this is going to implement our interface, and then it's going to use the send email async method. MimeKit is a little bit different from the SMTP server that's in SystemNet Mail, which apparently is deprecated and no longer recommended. So the .NET team is, and Microsoft is recommending that you use MimeKit instead. Personally, in production, I almost never would use a SMTP-based email server. I'll almost always use something like SendGrid or another tool that will do that as a service for me with an API key and all that for any of my clients that are going to try and send emails on a regular basis. It's just far too easy for your local SMTP server to get blocked as a spam email sender if you're trying to do it yourself. And it's much easier if you just leverage some of these cloud-based services to take care of that for you. All right, so in here... A uh, little bit different syntax. It still uses the SMTP client class name, but instead of passing in the server here, like you might be used to with SystemNet Mail, you have to explicitly connect with another command and then explicitly disconnect down here. I'm sure if you don't disconnect, the using statement, when it disposes of it, will take care of it. But this is just being a, a good user and, and cleaning up after ourselves inside of this block. Now, all we're doing here is creating a message and setting all its properties. Then we're going to send it asynchronously right here. And then finally, we'll log that we sent the email. So if we run this right now, it should just work. So if we come to PowerShell, uh, jump to our first one here and say .NET run, what I'm expecting it to do is actually send that email. And I just got a notification that says new message received. And if we jump over to PaperCut, you can see a few seconds ago we got an email. We can click on that and you see it's got the test body, test subject, etc. So everything is working. All right, but what happens if the mail server has a small problem and has a hiccup and isn't running anymore? All right, we come in here and we just run that again. As you're going to expect, it's probably going to fail, right? So it's taking a little longer, it times out, and then boom, we get this problem. Program has, uh, has exited successfully. It says here it was done. Uh, it logged the exception because I'm using a logger there. So the program didn't crash, but it still didn't send the email. Um, and if we look back over here uh, inside of PaperCut, you can see that we didn't get any more messages. We just have the one inbox message, which I'll go ahead and delete to make it clear when we get another one. All right, so that's not ideal. If we were expecting to send that email that tell the customer that their order had been completed or something like that, they never got it uh, due to hopefully what might have been some transient error. 
So if it was just a transient error, it would be nice if we could retry that. So let's go take a look at this retry logic. And in this one, we're going to just specify up front that we're going to use a max retry of three. And we're going to implement this with a simple while loop. So we're going to start our attempt count at zero. And while our attempt count is less than the maximum, we're going to continue to use that same code here to try and send an email using the same SMTP client and mail kit. Uh, and then down here, we're going to catch the exception when it fails and we'll increment the attempt. And if it exceeds the max retries or it gets to the max retries after being incremented, um, then we'll throw an exception saying it, it didn't, it didn't work. The other thing that you may want to do is implement some delay in your retry logic. It's usually a good idea, especially if you have many different applications running at the same time, they might all have to the, the failure occur at the same time because of a transient error in some dependent system like your mail server. Uh, you don't necessarily want all of them to be hitting that thing again and again and again with retries uh, when that happens. It's also worth noting that you can use poly for something like this, but it's designed for web services, not necessarily for SMTP email. So um, you could wrap your email sending in a service and then use poly. Um, but if you're not going to use an API endpoint for that, you're better off implementing it yourself with logic like you see here. So this little delay just makes it so it will take half a second to two seconds of delay between each retry. That's also going to give me a second to try and maybe toggle the email server back on. Uh, we need to make a small change in the startup of the program and specify that we're now going to use the retry one and we're going to return that. And without changing anything, let's just go ahead and run it. And this will just take a little bit longer. We're going to expect to see that it's going to fail uh, and it's going to do retry logic. And that will take more time. And it's going to time out a total of three times. And when it's all done, because the thing never did come back, it's going to fail here and you see that it did. So notice we're now hitting the retry email sender, but it still failed. All right, now we could add some more logging in there to let it show us that it's, that it's actually trying this, but let's see if we can get it to pass this time. When we run it, I'm gonna say here, run, uh, and then I'm gonna jump into Docker and I'm gonna turn that container back on. All right, so we're gonna run. And then over here, we're going to say, turn that back on, and then we'll see what happens here. And look, it says email sent. So another thing that you want to look at here is retry logic is something that you can easily add to an existing operation. So rather than doing what we did here, and you see making this method much longer to the point where you have to scroll and, and all this retry logic is uh, kind of hiding the real operation we're trying to do here, this is a good opportunity for you to use the decorator pattern. Uh, and so if we look at the email decorator here, this one is basically going to take in the actual email sender. In this case, I'm going to use that original uh, MIME kit email sender, and we're going to delegate to it to do the real work. And the only logic that's going to be in here is going to be the new retry logic. So we're going to add a little bit more logging in this case to show that we're trying to send it, which will be helpful. And then we're going to just delegate to the other original MimeKit email sender. So we don't have duplicate code and we don't have this bloated method that's doing too much. Everything else here remains pretty much the same. The only real difference is the existence of the, uh, the log statement and now we're using a decorator. So if we come in here and we change this one and have it use the retry email decorator, if we turn off our container again, so we don't have an email sender and we just run it. Now it should use the decorator, it should do the same work, but we should get a little bit more logging because we added that to say, hey, this is retry one of two or one of three and this is attempt two of three and then three of three and I'm not gonna turn the thing on so it's just gonna fail. And you know, three strikes, you're out, we're done. Email didn't get sent, right, we lost it. So now we've added the decorator pattern, we've added some retry logic, uh, but we're still left in a case where sometimes those emails just aren't gonna get sent. So now, Let's talk about the outbox pattern. And now the way the outbox pattern works is we're gonna use some kind of persistent storage. I'm gonna set up a SQLite database. So let me just do that real quick. We're gonna add a database in here and make sure it's created. Uh, I've already got the DB context set up. Here's my outbox entity. It's just gonna store the details of the email along with an ID and a property to say whether or not it's been processed, which is gonna to default to false. Now I'd also like to see how many emails are in the outbox that have not been processed whenever the program ends. So instead of just saying done, 
uh, we're going to add a little bit of information here that says there's this many pending emails to be sent. All right, and then the last thing we need to do is jump down here and switch this one to use now the Outbox email sender, and let's take a look at that. So now in the Outbox email sender, we're going to use the email DB context. We're going to create an instance of that entity. We're going to pass in all the details of the email. Uh, we're going to add it, and then we're going to immediately save changes. So that's going to do an insert operation into the database, and it's going to have that is process value of false. Then we're going to do all our logic here to send the email. And yes, we could probably use a decorator, which I'll show you in a second. And when we're all done, notice in here, we're going to specify that is processed was true, and we're going to save the changes along with all the logging that we're doing. All right, now we could also add additional retry logic in here as well um, if we wanted to combine all of these patterns, and that would be fine. All right, so let's go ahead and run this now. Uh, we'll jump back in here. Remember, the email server is not up right now, so we're going to go .NET run, and it's only going to do it at one attempt. I didn't add the retry logic, um, but when it fails, it's going to tell us now, look, there's one pending email to be sent. So in the future, we could go ahead and, and you know, have something watching that and resending those, or we could go and manually look at them, see if there's some reason why they weren't processed correctly, maybe an email was invalid, um, and then adjust that if we need to and then resend it. All right, just to show what happens when we run it again, I would expect there to be two email uh, pending to be sent if everything is working, and, and it is. All right, so then the last thing that, that we want to look at here is how do we make this one a decorator? Uh, and that's just right here. So let me just pull this into its own file real quick. And then we can look at the email decorator. And so again, we're going to pass in the actual email sender here. I'm using this concrete type for this, but there's no reason why you can't insert in here an interface, right? And then you could have control uh, in your DI setup as to which particular implementation you wanted to use if you had several. Right. For instance, I might use MimeKit email sending on local development, but in production, I might want to use SendGrid, and that'll be a different service. Uh, and so here, I would pass in an instance of I send email uh, or some other interface that I use for that purpose, and then I could configure whether or not I wanted to use MimeKit or or SendGrid or what have you in DI. All right. So now this becomes much simpler, and you can see the only logic in here has to do with the outbox pattern, where we're creating the entity and saving the entity. Then it's one line to call the decorated service that we are going to use to actually do the email sending. And then it's a couple more lines to make sure that we complete the outbox pattern here and specify that it was processed. Now these will not happen if there's an exception. The exception is going to not be caught and it's going to just, when, when this thing blows up, it's going to bubble up and the uh, insert will still have taken place as we already saw, but the uh, email wasn't sent. And so we won't specify that it is processed equals true. All right, now the last thing that you might want to recognize here is that if you're using this outbox pattern, maybe you don't need to actually call send email async at all, right? And so in another video, perhaps we'll show how you could use a hosted process or a background worker to take that outbox and instead of having to call it right now inside this application, we would just have some other service that's running in the background sending those emails as they come in from the outbox. And if it goes down, it'll just continue to loop. And next time it's able to send whatever ones have accrued or accumulated inside of that table, it will run through it and send them all. Let's not forget about Seek, which we set up at the beginning. One of the reasons why I really like Seek is because it provides you with structured error and logging support. So here I'm filtering this down. It's only showing the errors that are being reported. And if we take a look at this, we can see all the different things that happened. Uh, notice if you click on one of these, unlike just your standard console log, you're going to get a bunch of extra information in here that you could pass in. Uh, and then you can even use that to query. So if you find something about a log message and you want to see all the log messages that are like that one, it's really easy for you to make it so that you can just see those particular messages. Here we can see we've just got those three retries using the retry email decorator. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment inside of the, the YouTube comments. You can find me online everywhere as Ardalis. Like and subscribe for more videos. And until next time, keep improving.